Back in the day, 128 megs of RAM may have been considered a lot, but we're going to be upgrading this motherboard to its maximum supported configuration of 512 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM with these two 256 megabyte sticks. Because this motherboard only includes an ATA66 interface, I assumed purchasing this ATA133 adapter would be a simple upgrade. Maybe I can just plug my IDE adapter into it and get it to boot? The maximum throughput of a 32-bit PCI slot is only 133 megabytes per second anyway, so with the SSD we're using, we'd already be saturating it without the need to deal with SATA drivers. I guess fixing the boot order could probably help. Well, it can see Windows 98 is on there. This light's just staying solid, but it's clearly not booting. Let's try this backup card. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think doing it this way works. I wonder if a fresh install would work? I mean, it can read the drive. It sees Windows 98 is on there. All right, I guess let's try a fresh install. It's weird. It like loads super quick, but then locks up every time. I tried different cables different PCI slots, different SSDs, and as you saw, two different PCI cards. I guess you just can't use an SSD to IDE adapter along with one of these ATA cards. Okay, fine. Let's try a SATA card. I really didn't want to need to deal with SATA drivers, but these IDE adapters just don't seem to be working. Alright, let's benchmark it. And what the- <laughs> Turns out I'm the idiot. It helps if you correctly partition and format the drive using FDisk first. I'd be lying if I told you I didn't try to get it to boot off of this card. However, in order to do so, you need to flash the card so that it runs in IDE mode instead of RAID mode. But the flash utility I had wanted a specific chip and it didn't match the exact model that this card had on it. So at that point, I just said, screw it. Let's add a second drive and see how that goes. And hey, look, it's not gray anymore in the benchmark utility. I'm not sure what's going on here, but these speeds are terrible. And look at the processor, it's almost pegged at 100% the entire time this test is going. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say I've just kind of been wasting my time with this. Great! When you compare those speeds to the original drive I was using that's just plugged directly into the motherboard using that SATA to IDE adapter, you can see the speeds are significantly faster and the processor is only at like 66%. So all things considered, I think we're just gonna ditch the add-on card and stick with this. Now that I've finished wasting my life trying to make the hard drive faster, let's move on to an actual upgrade. Here we've got a Pentium 3 1 GHz CPU. It's got a 133 MHz frontside bus and is the maximum supported CPU for this motherboard. 
Technically, some faster Pentium 3s exist, but you need to use some crazy adapters to make those work, and they are not cheap. Let's pump the brakes for a second. Before we go any further, I'd like to get the BIOS updated on this motherboard. It's definitely a couple versions behind, and I want to avoid any compatibility issues. Now, normally to do this, you would need a floppy drive. However, since it's now the future, we can use this bad boy. Yeah. Hey, look. And here it is. We'll be using these buttons to navigate through a USB stick. And that USB stick will have a number of different virtual floppy disks on it. And this display over here will tell us which floppy disk we're accessing. If we take a look at the back, you can see it uses just the standard floppy cables. So we should be able to just plug this in and start using it. With this software, I should be able to create a virtual bootable floppy disk. Now, by default, it's going to create 100, so I guess that's fine, whatever. And I'm going to copy the BIOS file that I downloaded onto the first one. What I didn't record is you need to click save after copying the file over. Um, if you don't, you're just going to have a bunch of bootable floppy disks with nothing else on them. Make sure you click save if you're using one of these. Let's get this plugged in. Oh yeah. Done. Looks great. Now we just plug in our USB stick and after setting the proper boot order, it should uh, try booting off of here. Okay, it looks like it's booting off of there. And I guess let's enter the date for some reason. And this is the footage of where I didn't click save after copying the file, so you have to click save, duh, duh, idiot. Okay, now I've got the file on there. Let's try this again. And I can't see what I'm typing. There we go. Yeah, so we're gonna be upgrading the BIOS from A05 to A11, which is the uh, latest release. Press Y for YOLO. Oh gosh. They certainly know how to make that look terrifying. Hooray, flash successful. Press any key to reboot. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unplug the USB stick and then hit the any key. Delete, delete, delete. Hey, there we go, A11. That is a dusty screen, but it's booting. Booting is good. It feels good to have an upgrade actually work after the hard drive fiasco. Let's move on to the processor. <laughs> In the Dell system this was pulled from, there isn't normally a fan directly on the processor. Instead, it's just cooled by a case fan. I figured zip tying this 60mm Noctua directly to the heatsink would be a bit better. Yeah, boy! Now for our final upgrade, the GPU. What I have here is a Vision Tech TI4200. It has 128 megs of memory and runs at a blistering 8x AGP. Realistically, this motherboard only supports 4x, but I really don't think that's going to be a bottleneck. Interesting fact, this is the same upgrade path I followed way back when, upgrading from a 32 meg TNT2 to a 128 meg TI4200. Let's see how well it works.
it works. We have picture. Awesome. I installed this unofficial NVIDIA driver as it promises to be the latest and greatest thing to use for an older system like this. It took me a few tries to get it installed, mostly just because I'm an idiot. Once it was working, it was time to benchmark. Unfortunately, seemingly after the first test of the benchmark would complete, the entire system would lock up. This was a repeatable issue. I tried switching drivers to the official NVIDIA ones instead, but this did not make a difference. Maybe it's overheating? The GPU fan is making a lot of noise and has clearly seen better days. Perhaps this 80mm fan will help. Unfortunately, this additional fan did not help. I tried skipping the initial test of the benchmark and jumping right to the second. The second test does run, but similar to the first, as soon as it tries to load the next one, it locks up. To verify that this wasn't a problem with the new memory or processor that we added, I switched back to the TNT2 card and reinstalled the driver from Dell. With the TNT2 reinstalled, the benchmark completed successfully. And, well, it seems the CPU and memory alone did not add much benefit to the overall score. Okay, well I guess I'll try and see if I can get the TI-4200 working. I took the old fan and heatsink off, as those clearly were not doing much. You can see the dinosaur poop they used to glue this heatsink to the chip when this was manufactured 3 million years ago. I tried using alcohol to clean this off, but it's essentially become part of the chip at this point. I toyed with the idea of adding a different heatsink to the GPU instead, however, I ended up simply adding new thermal paste and kinda mashing the old one back on there. It somehow just sticks in place without any clips or screws, so whatever. I didn't reinstall the original fan though, since this was clearly garbage. Instead I set up an 80mm fan on either side of the GPU and crossed my fingers. And after fighting with the drivers again, I kicked off the benchmark. And wow, it's actually working! I'm seeing parts of the test the old card couldn't even run, including Skyrim, Joe Biden, Floating Turd, Vaporwave, Fish, and my favorite, Spin Horse. Holy crap, that score is way better. Okay, let's try some games. First up is Half-Life. Well, Gordon is running at about 300 miles per hour for some reason. This footage is not sped up, but it is buttery smooth, so that's good. Next up is Return to Castle Wolfenstein. This is the game that really pushed the system in the last video, so I want to see how much better it runs with this.